to introduce you to Shitta, my uncle, also the chairman of the Navajo Nation, Mr. Peter McDonald. Thank you, Shikta. Mr. Mirror Boy, Adam, our president, vice president, speaker of the Navajo Tribal Council, and a delegate from uh, Sheep Spring, yes, that's right. Also, over here we have some distinguished guests here. Uh, uh, from the Justice Department, Chief Judge, thank you for being here. And of course, we have Congressman uh, Hilleman. Thanks for coming here. And a very, very good friend of the Navajo Code Talkers, Lieutenant General Bedlin. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> you know, over the past few years, Ever since Navajo, Navajo Nation was recognized to have contributed quite a bit to the efforts of World War II, we've had some high-level Marine Corps officials here. I think this is the second time we had a three-star three general here on Navajo Reservation. And I want to thank you very much for being here. And I also want to thank our Navajo Nation tribal leaders, President Nez, Vice President Lizer, Speaker of the Navajo Nation Council, for being very supportive of what we are doing here, building a very unique legacy to show the nation, not only the Navajo Nation, but the entire United States and the world over, that one nation, one language, one special skill that was used to help win the war in the Pacific. So, there are quite a few descendants here. Of over 400 of us that served in World War II, to provide very important communication. All top secret and confidential messages were sent using Navajo code. It's Navajo code because it was not just speaking Navajo to one another. We coded the language in such a way that another Navajo listening to us who did not go through code school would not understand what in the world we are talking about. That was the kind of code that we develop and use in the Pacific. So it's important that we remember that not just us here, not just Navajo young people, the future generation, 
but for the entire United States. I've been getting telephone calls from Minnesota, New Jersey, Alaska, Western States, La Roche, State of Washington. I even got a call from Tokyo con congratulating the Navajo Code Talkers for, to help win the war in the Pacific. So, I want to thank all of you who are here today to help bring about this most important project that we have ever undertaken to build Navajo Code Talker Museum right here on this top hill. And when it's finished, I'm sure, this is a overflowing crowd underneath this tent here. But I imagine when we get it all done, we'll have a, another dedication and we'll probably see people all the way, all the way down to the state line, probably all behind the hill, all wanting to see what we did all together, every one of us, working together to make this project possible. Not just us Navajo people, not just Navajo leaders, but state leaders as well. Also, America, they all want to see this project succeed. So, it is very important that we continue to work together and make it happen as soon as possible so that the unbroken code that was used during World War II to help win the war. Yes, the only military code in modern history never broken by an enemy. Never hold code. Now, we have a new code. The new code is, we love our family. We love our relatives. We love our friends. We love our country. We love our freedom. We love our liberty. We love the peace that we all want together. That's our new unbreakable code. Yeah. What is your unbreakable code? Hopefully it's the same thing to preserve our freedom, liberty, and peace that we all enjoy. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the next our special keynote speaker who will tell you more about what this project really means to America. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Lieutenant General Bellin. You know, when all of us were in the Marines, we're all a fair afraid of officers. You notice I'm shaking here. I'm trying to introduce a great warrior, a great leader. But here it is. Okay. Um, before that, uh, we'd love to give a gift before you sit down to you, President and I. Um, and then um, I am remiss. Um, my apologies to my beautiful wife. I did not introduce her. And so three years into this vice presidency, I can still not know what to do. And so my deepest apologies. Ladies and gentlemen, the, one of the finest ladies in the land, the second lady of the Navajo Nation, Miss Dottie Lizer. Mrs. Dottie Lizer. And my first lady. So. Chairman McDonald, it is our esteemed honor, President Nez and myself, to give you a gift, a very, very beautiful 
Bogart, and um, I was going to put it on you, but uh, I'm just going to give it. I, I'm going to give that to you. And from uh, President Nez and myself, we just wanted to honor you with that. Oh, oh. Thanks, President. Yeah, come on, uh, President. Yes. <laughs> okay. A little off script, but. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, can I? You got the hey? Oh, Before I start, can I get the uh, the four young Marines from the Navajo Nation that I met earlier today out here? Can you please come up? There's six now, sir. Six, okay, six. Please come up here. And so when Marines, when we say to other Marines, please, it's not really please. <laughs> so truth in advertising. Come on up here right here and join me. And I'm going to come down because... I want to be in a position where I can look up to them. So, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting us here. And on behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David Berger, uh, it is a great honor for us to share with you this day. I met these young Marines earlier today because last night I spent the evening in my hotel room looking at black and white photographs of uh, Warrior McDonald and his brothers that the Navajo Nation gave to us 80 years ago. Now think about that. It's been 80 years since the, the Navajo Code Talkers first came together. A lot of history has happened in those 80 years. But if you think about the 80 years that happened before that, the Navajo Nation had no reason to give us your warriors. That's based on history, right? You weren't treated great by us, and yet you still decided to give us your warriors. And it was an experiment. It was an experiment to see if somehow we could find an advantage. And almost by luck, what happened was two warrior tribes met each other. And we have now had an 80 plus year relationship based on mutual respect. The first code talkers went to boot camp, just like these Marines did, with no special privileges. They went as a Navajo platoon. And their presence there was top secret. So no one could explain why they were there and why they were in a platoon. Now imagine 80 years ago, how they might have been treated. And all they did was break records. And they were noted at that time as being one of the best platoons ever to go through Marine Corps basic training. In fact, they were so good, they were so good, that in a very short order, they were sent back to the nation because the Marine Corps knew we had elite warriors. And what did they do? They brought back 400 more warriors. Now, Peter talked about the code and the language, and he talked about it briefly, but I want you to imagine this. The Marine Corps did not create a code the Marine Corps talked to these elite warriors and said, here is our problem. You will write the code. The language is vital, but it is what is here and here is what made the code work. Cunningness, cunningness and valor. The Marines, the Navajo warriors had to be forward on the battle, forward in the battle, the very closest Marines to the battle to be able to report back to what was happening. And then very smart, cunning warrior from the Navajo Nation had to receive that message. It had to be translated. And then it had to be given to older officers like me to help make decisions. There were Navajo warriors in every part of that chain and that was created by the cunningness and the valor in the hearts of the warriors. And the language was a critical piece of it, but just a piece. And that is from your nation. So why have we been so close for 80 years, because you continue to give us warriors like this. Right? Yeah. 
I looked, I looked at the photographs last night, and of course Peter looks a little different now, just a little. <laughs> but he looked very much like this, right? And so did his brothers who showed up and gave their all for the nation. And you still, you continue to give us your warriors. So this, like any relationship, like any relationship, it takes effort, right? If you really care, your family, the people closest to you, relationships take work. So today I am here on behalf of General Berger and the Commandant to say to you that we value this. We honor your traditions. We appreciate the valor of the warriors that you continue to give us. And this story needs to be told. So I will end by just asking these Marines to introduce themselves and their clans so that you know who they are. Where are they from? My name is Caleb Begay, Corporal Caleb Begay. Um, my clan is Plus Chi and Totochini, and I'll pass it on to you. <laughs> yeah, hey, my name is Corporal Douglas Stephen. Uh, my clan is Middle People. Thank you all very much. It's our honor to be here. God bless. <laughs> Thank you very much, General Bellin. Such a fine speech. We appreciate very, very much for you coming out here and help build this museum. As you know, over 400 of us serve as Navajo Code Talkers. And as of two weeks ago, there were four of us still alive until we lost Sam, Sam Sandoval Shipra. He was one of the very, very important members we had in terms of building this museum. He did a lot of work. He was my vice president of the association. I know his family is here. I'd like for you to introduce to you Malula Sandoval, the wife of the late Sam Sandoval. Thank you. And the son is here too. So today, there's only three of us still alive, my good friend Thomas McGay, he at the present time is down in Phoenix State Capitol, the, the state of Arizona is doing the same thing we are doing here, commemorating and celebrating the Navajo Code Talker Day, August 14th. Also, I'd like for us to spend a, a moment of silence for our dear friend, Sam Sandoval. No one's urgent, so this is be the key to that the cost. Thank you. Also, the, the third, the other person is 
John Kinsel from Lukachuka, Arizona, a real fun. I think he's the oldest Navajo code talker. Let's give him a good round of applause as well. I'm the youngest, 94 years old, only because I went in when I was 15 years old. All because I love the United States Marine Corps uniform. None of us code talkers knew or knew anything about there was such a thing as code talkers up then until we passed boot camp, combat training, communication school, and when we passed all of those three training, then we were separated from the Marine Corps and went to a special Navajo code school where we learned to code. And it's very much appreciated by America and people around our world. Thank you. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you very much. A wonderful thing. <clears throat> Us to recognize we don't know very much about militant. A lot of us, we sleep in as long as we want, eat and do what we want. These people here, they sacrifice their time. They're out there doing what they do for us to deserve to sleep in more. We're agitated by very little things 
But these people that sacrifice their time and life are the ones that gives us that freedom to do that. The moment of silence that was done. Pretty sad, but thank you for that respect. Idea Aben, which is an honest street or the Fikia Kuroshi Nasna was just told this. Kuro, another deep honor to introduce to you Representative Tom uh, a Holler. Yes, is you can banahos after this. Well, that's what you get for being an Arizona representative and not a New Mexico one, right? <laughs> Utah. Oh, my God. I thought you said it earlier, uh, New Mexico. Anyway, you know, you learn early on in life, in politics especially, <laughs> when you have Brig uh, Lieutenant General here get up before you and speak, and then President McDonald get up before you and speak, you better change your speech. <laughs> so, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Speaker, Delegate, Mr. McDonald, General, Chief Justice, I changed my speech. <laughs> if you, General, have, uh, you know Navajo, and sometime if you're ever over this way, Call me up and get in the car with me and go to the Navajo homes or Navajo meetings or every Navajo chapter house. And you will see, you will see the love that the Navajo people have for this country. I know you do when you have your troops with you. You will also see the love that these families have and the, the love that they have for their, those that have passed and those that are here. So as I, I drive around, I go to homes, and every home I go into that has a veteran, every one has a picture and a medal and a flag and a caring. Every meeting I go to has that same sense, that the, the pride, that they have in their family members that have served to be able to protect the freedom of our country, the freedom of the future of our country, the ability of our country to be able to withstand what we do day in and day out. This is a beautiful day. In fact, I'm so happy that the rain's not here right now. I wanted to come later on tonight, but not here right now. But there are many people across this world that on beautiful days like this that don't have the freedom to talk. They don't have the freedom to walk down certain streets. They don't even have the freedom in some cases to wear what they want to wear or to bring up their families the way they want to bring them up. We deserve to have that in our country. That's what our Constitution calls for. And I can tell you this, we have a strong economy. And that allows us to have the best military on Earth. And what allows us to have the best military on Earth are your sons and daughters and those that serve in this military that have a dedication to this country that is beyond anything I've ever seen in any other country in the world. <laughs> I don't have a direct, uh, well, first of all, President McDonald, you uh, have seen me a couple of times uh, down in the legislature and here, and each time you brought up the Code Talkers Museum. One day you and Hope came over to Flagstaff and you brought up that museum. In fact, that was what, what the meeting was all about. So thank you for your leadership on this and, and uh, the ability of you to be able to address it 
constantly year after year after year. And Sandoval did the same thing. It was great talking to you the other day. I will end with this, uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, the Navajo Code Talkers were Marines, and I have nothing against Marines. <laughs> I, not, not here especially. <laughs> but on Capitol Hill, you know, we see a lot of generals, a whole lot of generals. And uh, nothing against the Army out there, you know, <laughs> I saw you. But when a Marine three star walks down the hallway, People want to snap to attention. There's not too many of you around. I mean, there's there's chief, Joint Chiefs of Staff that don't get snapped to as much as a Marine Corps three-star. So we're happy he's here today. Uh, and we're happy that President McDowell is still here today. Yeah. And because of the code talkers and the fact that people relate with one another in war, work with one another in war, and need to work with one another in this country time and time and time again and find unity, we will make sure, or I know that I want to make sure that I thank the code talkers and the Marines for what they did for my four uncles who served in the Pacific Theater and all came back home because it was about working together. And with that, I know when to get off the stage too. <laughs> so history is going to remember the Code Talkers. It's going to remember our military. It's going to remember the freedom that we've been able to have. And it's going to remember the fact that our families depend on each and every one of them to come back home also. Thank you. Somebody kept stealing my microphone. Thank you very much. Um, without further ado, to let you know the gift that was given to my uncle here to, today, that was uh, a gift from the three branch government, uh, three branches of our government here, the Navajo Nation. That would be the legislative branch, executive branch, and also the judiciary branch. So thank you very much. And also like to um, uh, introduce the next gentleman that that will be coming to you, I had the honor to serve. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you. No wonder he wants to hang on to the microphone, huh? <laughs> You know, in, in, in Navajo, this when you do that, they say the chin. <laughs> wow. I know you would. <laughs> the honor to uh, serve with his father on the council. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the honorable, honorable speaker of the council, Mr. Speaker Damien. Thank you very much. And, uh, I 
I uh, don't want to block Madam Chair Cody, so I'll stand over here to the side a little. Uh, I don't want to block Vice President too as well. Good morning, everyone. You got that better? Thank you very much for being here. It's a wonderful morning here in downtown San Benito, New Mexico. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Most importantly, thank you to the leadership, to our veterans, but to our honorary dis uh, distinguished guests that have come and visited us uh, from all over the, the United States. General, thank you very much to our uh, cadets, uh, our, uh, our own uh, military personnel. Thank you very much for being here. To the awesome band, thank you guys. Let's give it up for the band. Thank you to the band, thank you to the individuals who did the 21 salute, to the taps, but most importantly, uh, to my Che. Uh, Honorable Peter McDonald, thank you very much for being here today, and th thank you very much to his wife, his daughters, his family for bringing him this way. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, and Rocky, thank you for being here too as well this morning. Most importantly, I think I want to say thank you everyone for showing your support this morning to our Navajo Nation Co-Talkers. I know that every one of us somehow, somewhere, and we're all related through clan-wise, and we we'll always say that we have a co-talk in our family. It comes from the descendants of where, where we come from and where, where we were. I myself came from a, a gentleman, his name was Nota Begay Sr. Dr. Begay Sr. passed away in 1964, though he was a co-talker and you know, he, was, he, he passed away four years before he was actually notified that he could release and even talk to his family about being a co-talker. And not many, we have many of our families that went through that. And we have many families who didn't know that, they were, that, they were co that their fathers, their grandfathers were co-talkers even into their late, when, into the 1970s and 80s. I do want to say to the federal government, thank you finally for recognizing them with the George Bush administration in, two, in 2001. Thank you for finally recognizing that the pay homage to our beautiful nation, but most importantly to our leaders and our warriors who put their line on the li life for this great country. And we continuously put our line in the front in the on, on arms way. Right now, how many of you have active military soldiers in the military right now? Stand up, stand up, stand up. You have active military family members. Let's 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 all think about them right now. Give them a wonder well found applause. Right now. Whether they're here in the, in the domestic country, whether they're outside of four sacred mountains across the great waters, they're there today defending our freedom, defending our passion, defending our right to do what we do here today. So we say thank you. My name's Seth Damon. I'm the speaker of the 24th Damo Nation Council. I'm with Ahni, born for Nanastasia, Tachini, Do Ashine, the Shiche, and Sebetine, the Shinala. I just want to say, first of all, thank you to uh, our, our president, our vice president, for being here, um, Mr. Mary Boy, who did serve with my father, Madam Chair Crotty. Good morning. Uh, Madam Chief Justice, man, everybody always forgets we have a third part of the government. <laughs> Madam Chief Justice, let's stand up right now. It's our first woman, our second woman, is one, our Chief Justice. She's our third branch of our government. Thank you very much, Madam Chief Justice. She's also my neighbor right now, too, so. <laughs> thank you very much, Madam Chief Justice, for being here. Uh, thank you, I do see our former, our, my former president, our former president too in the, in the audience, Honorable uh, Russell Begay. If you want to stand up and recognize Honorable Begay, thank you very much. I do want to introduce some members of our council right now. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, if you please stand right here on the front. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, I do see Vice Chair Raymond Smith in the back. His dad was a co-talker. See, remember, Vice Chair Smith. I do have, and all of you all know Madam Chair Amber Crotty right here. Madam Chair, stand up. Thank you very much. Oh, Audible Jimmy Yellow here, the man in the black hat. Yeah. Thank you, Black Mesa. 
always representing Black Mesa and communities in the gene. With that, colleagues and me members of council, I just want to say thank you for being here too as well. Thank you for being uh, uh, on top of this, but most importantly, we have to recognize as individuals, as I can say, that help get us to this point. I honestly see in the Devil Nation, I'll say it, we were dragging our feet, for the Chairman. We were dragging our feet to get to this point. This should have been done a long time ago when we were dragging our feet. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry that it took us this long to get to this point, but I see there was a there was a secret movement amongst the the code talkers in the last five years between uh, Senator our former uh, Senator uh, Pinto and Chairman uh, and, uh, Peter McDonald and Sam Sandoval all cornered me in 2018 and said you know we're gonna give I was the chairman of the budget and finance committee then and they're like we give the two million dollars to the nation now we got to start something you know from the state of New Mexico. And that was here for me, Dad. Senator Pinto, your dad, John Pinto. I honestly say, it was you three gentlemen who forced us to this point. You know, they said, if no one else is gonna do it, let's get ourselves to do it. And it was your dad, Sam Sandoval is your wife, or the, your, your husband. And Karen, is uh, Karen here? Karen, John? Uh, Karen John, Sam Sandoval's daughter. It was it was you. It was Peter McDonald. It was it was Hope driving her dad back and forth to Winderock on their own dime to say, you know what? Let's get us to this point. Let's get us there. And they forced us to this to, to say, you know what? Let's let's do it. So having numerous and numerous meetings, creating a new board. Asking New Mexico set, set representatives, like Representative Allison here, saying, you know what, let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's finally do something. We only have four left. And my buddy Sam Sandoval was the coolest guy ever. Have you ever met him? He was always there to me. He said, I, I miss him dearly. He was one of the most inspirational, influential gentlemen that if you ever met senior member of the uh, of of the co-talkers sam sandoval he was an individual who really would have loved to be here and i and i say thank you to his family for being here most importantly and for striving forward to the descendants thank you very much your your father your grandfather your great great grandfather would have been proud of this moment here today because we're finally put breaking ground on something that should have been done years ago. But what we're doing is we're saying strive the 24. Let's continue with this leadership and let's continue in this path. Let's not wait another three to four years. Let's build something now. And that's what we're doing. The Navajo Nation Council has been working together, with the Office of the Vice President, Thank you to uh, individuals like Davis Filford for coming to the meetings. But I really, really, really say thank you because right now the Navajo Nation Council is working together to find the, the funding to build it. And we are introducing legislation right now to build this pro, build this initiative. And thank you to the leadership from the, from the direct co-talkers themselves who got us to this point. Individuals like, uh, uh, our Mr. Kinsel and Mr. Begay too as well. We want them to actually walk the halls of this facility. And that's a vision that we all continuously have. So I just want to say again, thank you to everyone. It's not just done here with us, with breaking ground. We have to continuously fight for our nation to know that our next seven generations can still move forward and say that we're still here, resilient, and know our Navajo language. So again, thank you to everyone for being here. Most importantly, thank you to the leadership, but honorary, honorary dignitary, Mr. Peter McDonald, thank you for your wisdom, your encouragement, but your your leadership too as well in order for us to be here. Chat, everyone have a good day and thank you very much. Thank you on the way home. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know,
when you get certain age, you you start watching your kids and your grandkids. And this just happened to be that my grandson here, he picked up a lot of good things. And I thank you very much. Well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, also from the judiciary branch, we also have an individual that we'd like to give time to, uh, Chief Justice Joanne. We'd like to uh, have you say a few good words, if you could. You use this one. Yeah, a Let me get on this side. She a ya Joanne Jane in here. Kapahin Slinna and Sla Ado Kenya Ani a Bashish Chi. Twitch ini a dash a che Ado a ya kapahin dashanella. The nepazad I yesen in zeal god a ya. I yesen bit zeal god a and that's why we're here today. We are here to honor all of the individuals that took part. Imagine this. Let me get this, I'm sorry. Imagine this, back when our young Marines were learning the language. Where were we at? What were we doing? Little did we know that they were going to develop a language, a code, and it was not easy from the research that I did, from talking, it was not easy. It was not easy to learn how to describe sabotage, for example, or how to describe ships, how to describe submarines. And so we can just imagine that it, is, it was very, very difficult for them. But you know what? What they taught us is that they were, they were resilient and they wanted to do this for us. For us, they did that. And then also, you know, they did it for people they didn't even know. They did it for people in New York City. They did it for people in Chicago and, and some of the Americans that were living all over the world. So it, it, it just is not what we feel as Navajos, but it's the whole world that they did this for. And so it impacts the entire, impacts the entire universe. And I, I wanted to bring that up because when I was growing up, we didn't know about code talkers, although we had one in Tohatchee. Very, very nice gentleman. James T. Nakai. He lived in Tohatchee. He had a store, and then he had, he was uh, working with the mail, the postmaster. You know, but he did not talk about what he was doing. He did not talk about what he had to do because he was a gentleman. But what he did learn were the skills, the skills to come back, help his family, help himself, Help, help his parents, and then also to, to, to do that for us. We live within the four sacred mountains right now. And we are heartfelt to know that we had our young Marines do this. When they were doing this, as was described earlier, they did not know they were fighting uh, a war that was, was going on and they, they didn't know the impact that they would have on future wars and our freedom. They did not know that, but they were resilient. And so to all of us, to all of our young individuals here and those that are listening, all of our young people here, all of our young Diné, let us see, let us look at something that is hard but we can make it simple with hard work. And that is the lesson that, that all of our code talkers have instilled upon us. That when we work for something because we believe and because we have faith, faith is something that we cannot see, but we know that it's there and we know that it's a belief. And so I am grateful 
as a Diné woman for having military in, in my home. I had an older brother, he was a Marine, and he laid the foundation along with everyone else that was in the military for everything that we know today. Fundamental law, that was getting placed I mean, there's all of these impacts and there's all of these other developments that were going on. So the fact that we have a court system now, the fact that we can utilize a fundamental law was laid down by the freedom, by the freedom of our co-talkers. So let us embrace the Nebuzad, Ado, the Nebe Nehazani, let's embrace all of that because by the work that they were doing from developing alphabet for a longer word and all of that, that seemed like maybe that was maybe not so hard, but as we know it, it is very, very hard. So it has given us the ability to be here today. It has given us the ability to actually have uh, jobs to, to drive here today. And, and so a lot of these things sometimes we take for granted. However, thank you very much. I want to address all of our leaders here. Uh, President Jonathan Ness, uh, Vice President, Myron Leiser, Speaker, Seth Damon, Delegate Crotty, and Peter McDonald. And I have never sat next to a three three star general either. So, <laughs> so, and then and then we have also up here former vice uh, vice chair uh, Daesh. And then I wanted to uh, say thank you for everyone. And then uh, former delegate also uh, Mr. Mary Boy. Also, and then um, all of the. Uh, Miss Navajo here and, and all the four Miss Navajos and I don't want to leave anyone out but I am I am humble to be here and also for all of the families that are here uh, with uh, uh, it, military individuals all the uh, families here and and so I wanted to leave that I want to leave blessings I want to leave uh, the future the future of of goodness, of faith, of resilience. Thank you very much. Akeha. Thank you. Beautifully put. Ladies and gentlemen, also, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Senator Pinto. Shannon, is she out there? Oh, there she is. Good morning. Uh, Okay. Right now, at this moment, um, I'm not really representing myself. I'm the representative. Uh, the governor asked me to give her statement today to our people on behalf about the Kotaka Museum, and I will do another during the um, groundbreaking. First of all, so the governor of the state of New Mexico, and just to clarify, since we're so close to Arizona, is Michelle Lujan Grisham. She is very supportive. I give her many thanks for all of the things she helped our people with. First of all, I want to offer my sincere regrets for not being able to be with you today to celebrate the momentous occasion. This is a project that is near and dear to my heart. When Senator John Pinto, a co-talker himself, and the grandfather of me, came to me in 2019 and asked for my support in getting the project off the ground, I immediately got to work. 
In the end, I pledged a half a million to the legislators as they rallied to commit the other half. And here we are today, making his idea a reality along with the other code talkers. I am grateful to Senator Pinto for his vision for the incredible museum. And I commit to him and everyone here today that we will continue to provide the resources necessary to complete the important project. Of the other, of the over 400 Navajo Code Talkers, only three remain today. Peter McDonald, John Kinzel Sr., and Thomas H. Begay. These three men, along with the hundreds of others of Diné who selflessly served this country during World War II, deserve to be remembered always for what they did. As we recognize their sacrifices and support of our nation today, we all so celebrate the groundbreaking of the Navajo Code Talker Museum, which will memorialize forever the contribution of these heroes. The Japanese never broke their code, saving the lives of Americans. Their steadfast service to a nation that held systematically underserved and undervalued indigenous people is a true testament to their character and a debt that we will never be able to fully repay. I am incredibly proud that the Navajo Code Talker Museum will be here in New Mexico, the home of so many Code Talkers. May it serve as an inspiration for all of us, but especially the young people of the Navajo Nation. On behalf of the state of New Mexico and the nation, I salute the honor Mr. McDonald, Mr. Kinsel, Mr. Begay, and every Code Talker today and always. I look forward to joining you all here soon to celebrate the completion of the Navajo Code Talker Museum. I don't know if any of my fellow legislators are here, and some of you might know the story of how I got here. And if not, I will tell you later. So you'll have to come back. But the legislators, the Senate, the Senate, other senators that my grandfather served with, miss him dearly. They were committed to him. They respected him beyond. And sometimes he didn't even have to be there. They just knew it was his legislation and they would pass it. They would hardly debate him because he fought many hard debates before. Telling them that the Navajo people pay taxes too and that they also needed these resources. So with that, the legislators, the senators, put that, got rallied and put that money together for him. So that $1.1 million was the stepping stone that allowed us to get here today. And all I'm, we are waiting for is to see what other resources will be committed and I think we will be able to match it because that is how committed we are in New Mexico. I can't have. And I always thank the governor. We have the support all the way up to the national level. And I, this is not, this is probably one of the, I don't want to say the best time to be a legislator, but you know, all this, what we have gone through and what has happened since I took office, it's just only been a little over three years that I've been here doing this, continuing his work. And this was one of his projects that he already had going. And I'm very, very honored to be here and I'm very, very honored to take it on and continue it. Thank you. You stuck there. Okay, at this time, I'd like to ask all the uh, um, the dignitaries that we have here, from the president, vice president, speaker, delegate, and so on, to walk in front of uh, Chairman McDonald 
to be presented with the uh, with the coin and also a brochure. And we appreciate that. Proudly display it. Oh shit, that's actually eight hours. That's the case that I don't. You know, Emo can make a really good bolo tie out of those. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we're here too. You know, ladies and gentlemen, there's always uh, a very important mechanism that you tend to forget. Like people maintain their vehicles, but we don't even know how good of an oil we put in to see if the crankshaft is still working well. Well, the organization that put this whole thing together, there's a very important area, spiritually, traditionally. And with that, I'd like to thank, uh, um, as a matter of fact, I'd like to give a good round of applause to Suche, Mr. Frank Daish. Okay, the maestro. That's it, right? Oh, Frank Dish. Yeah, that's what I call upon him. Hot seasons and shit. Guys, I don't know. Please be seated. We are on the Navajo Nation. The Nebuchadnezzar of Akai. Felissa. <laughs> I don't the AR Felissa do Felissa in the way Wichita Falls, Texas, Shepherd Air Force Base, Adenad, Nish Adet is not easy what where should not have thought all this. No, I just have I get up, Kadia, a care. Nana Nana said, Laugh song, then you get up, eh, don't shake your head now with the donkeys. Eh, quite why I see, Kay, yeah, get up with the Hold just that. Just so. Not do so. Not let so. In a pie, all yeah. Hold us at that. Even now, the city is that needs and does bar. Ha elects and does bar. Nikaya needs and does bar. Ah, there has say us key, the husband. No, not Tajin, the husband. Say the hustle. I don't die the hat here, just the hustle. I don't know if you have a 
But are you a Nikadit and Tadato, Eva Hedit, then this cheated? But are you a Hassan? I cared of the male down here. But are you a Hatha never care? He has Ah, Bada Hamas and Hobbit Hada, Trego, what are in his fault? This cheated. I don't that at Roda didn't need a strange, you know, Yahata, see it on the city up. A Koyahan hid up in the sheetness. A Yahatin is G Advisory Board for Navajo Code Talker Museum Organization. But our Yahatin on the city is on the office. But over here, I still on the Yahat strategic plan. I can't have a Yahat does his date. I can't have a Yahat Sam Sandoval. He can't have what? But on his star of what I've been on the city is Yah. I don't have a Yahat a teacher. Teacher was the city, but the hook are a yaha a in the other ya in the aro at ayaz with the halt. I wrote for the send up world town, send up world town. A yaha hook up neat. I have a quiet hook out in his honest stars. Lee, ah, there's a brother, Mr. Clark Benjamin. A yaha are a sunny natives. Ah, being that I thought as a point of car, I didn't hear on this day's ya. I don't that at Vina go this for Yaski or Hoje, Ha Higi in Pass, Anni, Elon Handani, ah, to change. I have in Genova Yak, Elon Hata Hadil Yaho. I don't a quajo, a quaish, say Hato Kash, a alacranic as you go that is neat, and can understand that is neat, that it no one's a whole horses. Nana, a Yaha Union. I B E W A Yahat Kaz Kazmo Miss Benson Yat A Ha is the Hisha A Yahai Bad Kaz A Yahai Naka Today Yos Nashbunov at the Ashon Hade Yilda Aho A Yahako Echoday did is A Yahai did I saw Huni Nanish that all day Aho A Yahai Ba Hansen Ahon the Hazot Kade the Atanje Hodges Aroda Otado with Is Nana Kone Where has Anagi a Yaha A, a glass base is in on this, not a business. But are you a Yaha in a Hagito, not in Sahakis, a young Kandasis, they love a co a Yaha A. Let it be said today, we establish the Navajo Code Talker Gourd Society. For all our dogs, what are you have been killed and then don't let you have that you know hold this. Also, I'd like to extend my appreciation to uh, the rest of the board members. Thank you very much for being with us. Also, uh, planning and taking all this time to uh, out of your lives to be uh, with us to plan on how this is going to go forward. After our speech here and we do the uh, groundbreaking, we're going to leave this premises and go to the airfield. And we have... Uh, an Osprey over there. And we have the Code Talker logo. On that logo where the color is slightly gold, we're gonna put Tadadin and spray it on there. Then we're gonna take that logo and put it on the United States aircraft. So that's the th next thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna invite you to all go over and help us do that too. I'd like to thank the uh, DOT. Navajo DOT, where you're sitting today, it was not like this. We asked them, the board members, they took the time and effort to uh, set the, the, the stage the way that it is today, the tents, everybody that is here, the way that you came in, the parade. So we want to extend our appreciation to those people as well. Also, I want to thank the uh, veterans, all the veterans, regardless of uh, military service, United States Marine Corps, thanks you. Women, veterans, we thank you. So I'm gonna express those thoughts from, uh, from the board. Also, at this time, let me call out the call to action. Say it again, I'm putting the call out to action. Uh, State of New Mexico said they had some money for us. I'll take it as a board member today so that we can start uh, working on the museum today. Speaker, you mentioned that uh, you support and have resources. I'll take that today as well, sir. You can put it in my hat. 
Mr. President, thank you for your support. Vice President, thank you for your support. Sinantajitra, Peter McDonald, but in days, this is a whole list. Ah, Benahasa, and I say it's time that I get a shins out at days, yeah. But are you able to get it? It's an adult three star general. Thank you. He said that he was going to give me a coin, so that's what I'm waiting on right now. <laughs> あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
perpetual. Not so in this Congo, out in Hadi, Lin, Lidoli. I hear three songs, they should name it out in the. I kind of like the mic. I don't know if this is. So it's not how long it led it, that's a duck. 43 years, they are out of the way. Staff Sergeant. Sergeant First Class, yeah, but Ilya. McComb, Chicky, will ya? I know my granddaughter, do Reagan, will ya? Reagan, yeah, yeah. Reagan. Ronald Reagan, man, that's a bit. And they didn't ask. How should I say? Let the people look at you. And the whole cow, and they didn't ask. Give me a solid, give me a solid, give me a solid. I guess it's next to us, see, so. What's the good thing to us, see, do this? I can't. Hey, I'm a United States Marine. How many Marines are here? Uh, I didn't hear you. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. I don't know what you know. 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 I don't know but hey, yeah, has to wait the house. Can you marine him? I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you very much. They want all the board of directors. They want all the board of directors. Everybody can stand up for the hymn. I'd say this is the dog is the dog. It's a team that put this program together, and the team captain is uh, Regan Hawthorne. Where is it? Our chief executive officer, Regan Hawthorne. He's out there. There he is. Uh, come out here, Regan, and let people take a good look at you. Because just a month ago, we didn't have any play. Here he is, Regan Hawthorne. He was our chief executive officer. Put this entire program together with a team, a real good team. Team like Albert Damon, Vern Lee, and many others. Board, board of directors of Navajo Code Talkers. The president of Navajo Nation, speaker of the Navajo Nation, many other inter tribal enterprises, they all pitch in and said, we're gonna do it. And by golly, they did it. So give them a good round of applause. Okay. Okay, so we go ahead and start making our way to the uh, to the dirt for the uh, dirt ceremony. He wants you to jump over the, the rail. Head first. Huh? 
我们这是一个好的好的事情，这不多了，这是人民。